Chelsea Football Club fans, just as soon as we were excited about the idea of Christopher Nkunku and Levi Colwell and Romeo Lavia playing for Chelsea again, we got the footage taken away from us. Chelsea training was not accurate as we like to say. But Pochettino gives us a good update on all three players. He gives us an amazing update on Wesley Fofana and he gives us some insight on his views on Newcastle and Lewis Hall. Why Lewis Hall left, what was going on. And finally, I need to have a little bit of a rant. And the reason I need to have a little bit of a rant, you're gonna say, why are you ranting again, Alex? I'm not ranting because out of a bad place. I'm ranting out of a place where I'm going to protect Mikhailo Mudrik. And the reason I wanna protect Mikhailo Mudrik is because Harry Redknapp's coming out with some comments from Mudrik's all manager Frank Lampard so Uncle Harry is coming out with some comments that in my opinion are just uncalled for. There was no need for them. It's not the honest truth. It's not exposing the underlying effects. It's just pure hate and putting unnecessary advice onto the player's head top. We're going to talk about that. We're going to start with that actually. Let's get on with Welcome it. Welcome to the Kafka Zibrat. Okay, in today's video, you saw the running order. You clearly enjoyed it. So what I'm going to ask from you guys now is to hit that like button. I want to hit a thousand likes on this video. The easiest way for me to do it is for every single one of you just right now, do me a favor and do it. Subscribe if you made it this far and you're clearly enjoying the content that you're seeing. You made it this far in 2023, clearly your attention span has carried you to this far. It's because you're enjoying it. And finally, if you guys want to go follow me on TikTok for more football related combo, in the pinned comment, go follow We're me. going to start with the Mikhailo Mudrik, then we're going to get into Newcastle versus Chelsea preview. And the reality is, the preview is not as important as I want to say what I want to say here. Because Mikhailo Mudrik joined Chelsea for £63 million. He joined at the age of 22. He joined when his family is at war. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. He's genuinely at war. He is in a period of his life where there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of pain, most probably. And psychologically, it'd be difficult to focus on football. So he has joined Chelsea. And ever since then, I don't think he's been amazing. I'm going to be the first to say it. I genuinely think he's raw, there needs to be some development, and we need to be open and honest when we discuss him. However, there's a line between being open and honest, and there's a line of just pure unnecessary hate. When we talk as Chelsea fans, we talk from a place of emotion, we talk from a place of passion, and we talk from a place of, we are frustrated that you're not playing well, and it's because I am fully invested into this team. What Harry Redknapp done for me is out of a place of just spite. It's hate and it's nasty work. And the reason I'm going to explain to you now, Harry Redknapp said, he spoke to Frank Lampard, Frank said that he's super quick, he's very, very quick. However, the kid doesn't know football. And for me, there's two problems with that already. Then Harry continues to say, 90 million pounds, he should know football, it's the bare minimum. Well, number one, he didn't cost 90 million pounds. Like, you're just talking out your nonsense ass there. Because the reality is, he costs 63 million pounds, and the fee could go up to 88 million pounds if he hits the add-on clause. Evidently, he hasn't hit the add-on clauses because he's not been performing to the level. So, he is 63 million pound player. Then, and this is the big then, there's no need to say what you said that Frank said. Because now, all of a sudden, Frank Lampard looks like he was managing Mudrick, but was going home and um, bitching to Uncle Harry. Uncle Harry, you won't believe a gays. Pass me to Yorkshire, or they won't believe it. At this moment in time, Mudrick is absolutely trash. What? What is this nonsense? You can't be doing that. I think it's unprofessional. I think, more importantly, I think it's nasty. This kid is 22 years old. I actually think, instead of encouraging and developing and giving this kid opportunities to play into form, what ended up happening was this kid was just, he was left out there to hung out to dry. One week he's playing, next minute he's not playing, he's gone for three weeks, he's out for three weeks. I think Harry Redknapp needs to keep his mouth shut. Honestly, at this moment in time, Harry just wants to earn a few extra bucks talking nonsense. Because the reality is, the opportunities he get in the media, it should be going to someone else. There's a reason you lot are sitting here and watching me. There's a reason why you lot go watch Matisse, you lot go watch Eunice, you lot go watch Miz, you lot go watch Expressions, Rants, all the other content creators. Because we actually add more context to what we talk about than most of the ex-pros and ex-managers. And the reality is, they should know the game better because they played it, but evidently they need to start doing clickbaity nonsense and saying stuff that just doesn't make any sense. What do you mean doesn't know the game? Like for me, it, it makes no sense. It's, and 
unjustifiable thing to say. You can't quantify that statement. He doesn't know the game. What, did he sit down and write an essay? Did he sit down and do a multiple choice test? Did he sit down and do a training drill? Did he sit down and tell you how he speak about his philosophy and one, one defender on the right hand side, one defender on the left hand side, spread the wing backs out, have a defensive midfielder in the middle? Did, did he explain his philosophy? I don't know what that statement mean, means. He doesn't know the game. It's such an empty rhetoric. It is silly and it's nasty because the reality is Mason Mount has joined Manchester United for 55 million pounds that could go up to 60 and we ain't heard a word of it. And Mason Mount has been twice as bad as Mikhailo Mudrik. But it's because Mason Mount is British and there is an, a support for British players like there isn't for players that come from abroad. And that's the truth. And that really frustrates me because we shouldn't be doing that. We really should not be doing that. If you're gonna do it with one, you do it with all of them. Phew, some, some interesting news now. Let's get into Newcastle versus Chelsea. Finally, we get our Premier League back. And Maurizio Pochettino gave us a very nice, interesting update. And the update is Moises Caicedo has just flown back from Ecuador. For me, this is wild if he plays. The fact that it's Friday and he flew in Friday morning, has to have one training session and then get into the game against Newcastle, go in again, um, Joe Linton and what's it called Longstaff and Brunggen Marange like it is going to be a battle it is absolutely going to be a battle for Newcastle and Chelsea so it's wild to me that Caicedo is going to play most probably Pochettino already confirmed that he's announced his team for tomorrow's game to the boys and it's going to come out tomorrow because he doesn't want to release it too early but Reese James could be set for 90 minutes and he said he's more than fit enough, he's strong enough, he's really developed and this is good. We've eased him in nicely and slowly and this is something that we had to do. I think it was too quick and too easy to just dash him in and then he gets re-injured. So it's a good thing we avoided it. Then we spoke about Levi Colwell. He said Levi Colwell will be in the squad. He didn't confirm whether he starts. I've heard in some areas that people were saying Levi will start due to his height, due to the fact that we just aren't as big as Newcastle, so we will need that athleticism and the aerial threat to A, defend, and B, to make sure that we win um, our individual duels in the air, whether it's attacking set pieces or defending set pieces, makes total sense. And then Pochettino went on to explain that Laviana and Kunku will not be in the squad. And I know that's going to be a really disappointing for a lot of people, myself included. I think Chelsea Twitter pulled a fast one on us because they were posting pictures, they were getting us gassed, they were literally t giving us all this faith that these men were gonna play. However, they pulled it away at the last minute and I actually like what they're doing here. The reality is we don't need to rush these guys back. We need to ease them back in. If they don't get minutes tomorrow, I want them to get minutes against Brighton, 20, 30 minutes here and there, tactical development, and then we can work from there. Because the reality is, there's no point in them coming back and re getting re-injured. That's just my personal opinion. We heard a very interesting um, quoting from Maurizio Pochettino. He said uh, Wesley Fofana is back in training, but it's not training with a team. It's basically running on grass. It's basically a motivation for him to understand that he feels comfortable with his body on grass again, psychologically. He really went on to clarify that this kid will not be playing football for at least until uh, the next year. There is no chance he'll be coming back. And that's true because six months to stop running since an ACL, and then another three months is what Broya technically did. So it makes sense. And we need to be very realistic with Wesley. Wesley's broken down three times, right? And I've said it on many occasions. If Wesley never kicks a ball for us again, I won't be shocked because his body is broken down on so many different occasions. Like how many times can you get back up when you're thrown on the floor? Because that's what these injuries are like. Nine months out, 12 months out, 13 months out. Wesley's psychological aspects need to be protected. And when he comes back, He's going to want to be playing as quick as possible to make up for lost time. However, Chelsea need to nurture him back. I think the way Chelsea need to deal with this is the way we dealt with Armando Broy. I think we need to ease him back in slowly, surely, give him minutes here and there, and then maybe in May, maybe in April, you ease him back in, and then he goes from preseason 
hopefully competing for a starting spot. That's just my personal opinion. I want to hear yours. Poch also spoke about uh, Lewis Hall. He basically said, yeah, Lewis Hall won't be able to play tomorrow because he's on loan. However, the move happened for numerous reasons. Number one, it benefited Chelsea at the moment in time to let him go for the fee that we let him go. It also benefited Lewis Hall because he wanted to move on and it benefited Newcastle because they got a great player. The reality is there's been a lot of articles that have been coming out recently reiterating that because Chelsea overpaid for Caicedo, because they went in for Romeo Olavia, we had to get rid of Lewis Hall to balance. Guys, whilst a lot of people are upset, I'm not gonna lie to you, I think Romeo Olavia is a better prospect than Lewis Hall. And if it means we had to balance the books, then so be it. Because for me, Romeo Olavia could be a pinnacle sample in our midfield for years to come. I don't know what Lewis Hall is. I don't know whether he's a midfielder or whether he's a left back because the reality is the kid's been playing everywhere. And what I don't want to happen is he becomes another utility player that never achieves his potential because he just plays minutes here, there and everywhere. So for me, this was the right decision. We let him go. It is what it is. You get what you give some. Finally, in regards to the game tomorrow, Maurizio Pochettino elaborated that he's very confident. He's very excited about the performance. He understands that the games against Liverpool, Arsenal and City are very different to the game that we're going to experience against Newcastle. And we need to play in a specific way. We need to be able to open up deep blocks. And he gave a very interesting comparison. He said, if you look at the game that Liverpool had against Brentford and we had it had against Brentford. Games were very similar. Their maturity got them through it. Ours didn't. And I think that's exactly what we need to talk about. The fact that he keeps reiterating the word maturity tells me that he knows what the problem is. It's not quality, it's maturity, it's know-how. It's been there, done that. So for me, I'm very excited to see that. Um, he was very uh, confident about the way, the shape of the squad, the train rhetoric of the squad. He said, now we have to just go out there and prove it. He was very complimentary on the job that Eddie Howe has done. He said Eddie Howe is a very good manager and Eddie Howe has prepared the team very well. And to be fair, he has done a phenomenal job. He picked them up when they were 20th. They went on and got Champions League qualification. I think at this moment in time, them regressing to the mean to the eighth place, ninth place, seventh place, and out the Champions League is the normality. It's what this squad should be doing. They were just drastically outperforming, in my opinion. But guys, this was the Gaff Guys View. I hope you lot enjoyed it. Tomorrow, I will give you a match review after the game. I hope you lot enjoy it. Make sure you tune in. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Peace out. I'm out.